Hey, what's going on guys? The Hover Man back with my review of Texas Chainsaw. I recently decided to rewatch some of the TCM films because I'll be ranking them soon. In fact, I even watched Leatherface for the first time, the TCM prequel. But more on that later. Prior to this, I had only seen Texas Chainsaw just one time, so this was my first rewatch of the film. Texas Chainsaw is a 2013 horror film, and it is the second, or third depending on how you look at it, in a trilogy of TCM films. It's a direct follow-up to Toby Hooper's 1974 classic, and Leatherface, which was released after this one but is a prequel to the original, is also part of that trilogy. This one ignores all of the previous sequels and the remake films. Not only does Texas Chainsaw directly follow the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it picks up on the exact same day that movie ended. We are taken back to that day as we witness the aftermath of Sally's escape. Bill Moseley has a role in the scene, as does Gunnar Hansen. As a matter of fact, this was Gunnar Hansen's final role before his death. And no, he does not play Leatherface in the scene. After most of the Sawyer family is killed by a lynch mob, a baby survives. A local couple involved in the murder of the Sawyer clan take her in and raise her as their own. The film then jumps to 2012. Despite what the timeline would suggest, the baby is now in what appears to be her 20s. Now, if you do the math correctly, she should be about 39 years old. That seems to be everyone's biggest gripe with this movie. But more on that in a bit. 20-something-year-old Heather grew up believing that her parents were not her adoptive parents, but her biological parents. They never told her the truth. So she is quite surprised when she receives a letter informing her she has inherited some land owned by a grandmother whom she never knew existed. Apparently, her grandmother has died, and Heather has inherited her mansion in Texas. After walking out on her parents... Heather heads to her new home with her boyfriend, her best friend, and her best friend's new boyfriend. On the way, they stop for gas at a gas station during a really bad rainstorm. There, they pick up a hitchhiker who is on his way to New Orleans. He joins them on their journey. When they arrive at Heather's new land, she meets her lawyer there to sign some papers. He brings her the keys to the estate, and he also gives her a letter. From her dead grandmother. Heather's lawyer instructs her to read the letter and reminds her to do so numerous times. If she had listened and read it right away, there would probably be no movie, so it's a good thing she didn't. There are acres of lands and even a cemetery where the Sawyer family is buried. The mansion is huge and it's beautiful. It's fully furnished, there is expensive glassware and silverware, there's a pool table, and secret passageways, and hidden rooms. And there is something, or someone else hiding, in the basement. Jed Sawyer. Leatherface. So, not to go into too much detail as not to spoil everything, one by one, Leatherface's new victims meet his chainsaw. Although, I do have to say, they are not all necessarily killed by it. It all leads up to an exciting chase as Heather runs through a carnival with Leatherface not far behind. And as if a carnival setting isn't cool enough, it's Halloween time, so a lot of the carnival guests are dressed in Halloween costumes. I remember seeing a clip of the carnival scene in the trailer for this movie before it was released, and that's what really had me excited for it. I love carnival settings as it is, but to see Leatherface chasing a victim through one? Wow. At that point in the trailer, I didn't even realize the movie took place around Halloween, so that's always an extra bonus. Besides the Halloween costumes at the carnival, there are also Halloween decorations throughout the film. The movie was originally slated for an October 2012 release after being filmed in 2011, but to avoid competition with some other films being released that same month, the release date was pushed back until January 2013. 
But with the Halloween timeline, October definitely would have been the more fitting release month. Now, as for the timeline, it just doesn't make sense. We know the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released in 1974, and in fact, actually took place in 1973. This is confirmed in this movie, because the date is clear on evidence files. So then you might think, okay, well maybe the movie is set in the 90s, since Heather and her friends are definitely in their 20s. But nope. Then we see some smartphones. Even then, you could hypothesize, well, maybe in this movie universe, smartphones were invented sooner. That works, right? Wrong. There's another problem. When Heather is in the Sawyer Cemetery, you can clearly see the date of her grandmother's death on her tombstone. And the year says 2012. I'm sorry, but Heather, played by the gorgeous Alexandra Daddario, is not 39 years old in this film. By the way, if you're a fan of Alexandra Daddario, I highly suggest you check out season one of True Detective. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I thought she was great as the final girl in this as well. Marilyn Burns, who played Sally in the original The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, has a role in this one as well, but I won't give it away. The kills in Texas Chainsaw are brutal, as they should be. The mansion is awesome, as is the carnival, which I've already mentioned. Plus, it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre Halloween movie. Why wouldn't you want to see it? And the ending, I thought, was fantastic. Overall, even with the timeline that makes absolutely no sense, I really enjoyed Texas Chainsaw. Where do I rank it in the franchise? Well, you'll have to wait until later in the week to find out. But until then, what do you think of Texas Chainsaw? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up and be kind. Subscribe.